ladies and gentlemen. I'm Gary Leroy, Associate Dean of the Wright State University Boonshoff School of Medicine. And it's my privilege to act as your Master of Ceremonies. It's a beautiful day for a virtual graduation ceremony. To our students of medicine, congratulations. You have dedicated many, many uh, years of hard work to achieve this goal. Today we celebrate for our 40th annual Boonshoff School of Medicine graduation. We thank the staff and faculty, both full and part-time, and volunteer faculty, and our community for helping our school succeed. For the success of our graduates, we particularly want to thank the people most supportive, your family and their friends. We applaud each of you. This is the first time in 40 years in the history of the school that we're having this virtual graduation ceremony. Graduates, you're about to officially enter the profession of medicine. During extraordinary times in this country and this world, the faculty and staff of the Boonshoff School of Medicine sincerely wish we could have been with you for this important transition in, in your profession. At this time, I'd like to introduce and welcome some faculty that would love to be here with you. So they have something to say to you. Director of Admissions to working with you in clinical medicine. It has been an honor and a privilege and a whole lot of fun along the way. Congratulations, go do good work. Remember the five rules, teach them to someone else. And I'll leave you with one more. You alone can do it, but you cannot do it alone. Take care of yourself, be someone's wingman. Good luck. Congratulations, class of 2020. This is a huge accomplishment. Take a moment to savor it. It's been a lot of work this past four years. It's been a great pleasure and honor to teach you guys. We as faculty are so proud of you. You're such a resilient class between devastating tornadoes and mass shooting and now a pandemic. But you've kept going and nothing can stop you. Good luck and I can't wait to call you guys colleagues. Take care and keep in touch. Congratulations. You have met a major milestone. For four years, you have worked tirelessly to one goal, which is today. We appreciate you and all that you do, who you are as individuals, who you are as a class. From day one to now, the very last day, we are proud to call you our family. We're proud to call you our alumni. We're proud to call you our friends. As you go out to the world, we know that you will do great things um, and hope that you will always consider Boom Shop home. Congratulations again, and good luck to you and your family always. Hi, class of 2020, it's Dr. Overman. I just wanted to say congratulations. Uh, we're so proud of you. We know you're going to go on and do great things. I hope you all stay healthy and happy. And once again, just congratulations. You've worked so hard to get where you're at. Bye. Take care. Hello, class of 2020. I'm Dr. Brian Springer with the Department of Emergency Medicine. On behalf of all of the EM faculty, congratulations on reaching your goal. No matter what field it is that you're going into, we hope that you take some emergency medicine tips and tricks with you. Be healthy and be safe. Now go out there and kick some butt. Boonshoff Medical School Class of 2020, congratulations on your enormous achievement. Feel the handshakes and hugs from your faculty reassuring you that you are more than ready to practice medicine. The world needs you more than ever. Thank you, young doctors, for what you will do and sacrifice as you enter the healthcare workforce. And if you have any trepidation, 
Just remember my silly PPE dance at the beginning of your third year. Think of that and smile as you embrace your next steps. Medical school graduation has always been a tremendous milestone and is often very emotionally charged for everyone. In 2020, we've seen things change that we thought would never change. Uh, this graduation may feel less emotional or even empty, but this is a medical crisis. And we know that this graduation is even more important and more significant than ever before. And I tell you, it has been an honor and a privilege to work with each and every one of you. And I wish you the best in your ongoing journey as physicians. Class of 2020, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on graduating from medical school. This is a huge accomplishment, and I'm so grateful that I was able to be part of your journey. I wish you the best as you enter the next phase of your training. Hello, class of 2020. Your class has participated in many notable events. You were the last cohort of our legacy curriculum at Boonshop School of Medicine. You are graduating during the 40th anniversary of the opening of Boonshop School of Medicine. And oh yeah, you're entering medicine during a worldwide pandemic. All of these events help to shape who you are and who you will become, but none of them should define you. You are about to do amazing and wonderful things. I share with you today my hot air balloon socks because I believe that you are going to rise above this crisis and soar. Congratulations and best wishes. I'd like to say to all of you, congratulations. Um, I feel sad I won't get to walk the walk with you at the Schuster Center this year. You deserve all the pomp and circumstance we usually can give. I hope you do feel and know how proud and excited we are as your faculty. In addition to all those people around you now who care so much about you, even before you were physicians. Your future is bright and hard and uncertain and full of patients who need your service. You will need them too. Patients continue to be my best teachers. I continue to be humbled by life lessons that come from all different aspects of my life. <laughs> and I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing with you what I know now and what I am still learning. Please take good care of yourself as humans first and then physicians next. Believe in yourself and in the power of Boonshop. It will take you far, it will serve you well, and it will challenge you to continue your path forward. I wish I could run around and give you all hugs and congratulations, but this will have to do. Please keep in touch and be well. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, faculty, for those, of those videos. Uh, thank you to all the faculty that uh, wish that they could be here with us. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the president of the Wright State University. Dr. Susan Edwards will give her remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very excited to be here today with you to join you on such a joyous occasion. But I always find graduation somewhat bittersweet. We are all delighted to share in the wonderful celebration of our medical students and their accomplishments. And we wish you well as you prepare to apply what you've learnt here in the Boonshop School of Medicine to your pursuit of new challenges on your way to even greater achievements. And yet we are also saying farewell to more than 100 unique individuals who have come to become a vital part of the university's community. Four years ago, more than 5,000 students from across the world applied to fill the spots available for first year students in the Boonshoff School of Medicine. You were one of the very few selected. We welcomed your enthusiasm and dreams at the white coat ceremony. And over the past four years, 
Through your hard work and dedication, you have proven yourself worthy and reached your goal. I know for all of you, this is a dream fulfilled. Because today, for the very first time, you can sign your name followed by the letters MD. It gives me such pleasure to know that many of you will be staying with us for the next step of your careers. As new physicians, in one of our outstanding residency programs. I know our faculty members will eagerly welcome you as colleagues, and I'm sure they look forward to helping you gain experience in your chosen field. Some of you will prepare for places on the front lines of medicine in primary care specialties, such as medical, uh, sorry, family medicine or pediatrics. Other of you will remain with us as residents in emergency medicine, obstetrics and gynaecology, psychiatry or surgery. If history is any guide, we may also take comfort in the thought that many of you may decide to remain in the area even after your residency, so that patients here in our region may continue to benefit from your brilliant minds your compassionate hearts, and your healing hands. For those of you who will soon leave us for residency programs elsewhere in Ohio or across the nation, we know that your training here has prepared you for ve very well for specialties as diverse as anesthesiology and neurology, dermatology and ophthalmology, and orthopedic surgery and diagnostic radiology. Wherever your paths lead you, whatever your focus, we can be certain that you will represent us as graduates of the Boonshoff School of Medicine and we'll be proud to recognize, and we will be very proud to recognize you as alumni of Wright State University. So today, I am honored to be the one of the very first to congratulate you officially on this momentous occasion to express my admiration for all that you have achieved in your years with us and to offer you my very sincere best wishes for your continued success. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the Wright State University, Boonshoff School of Medicine. Dr. Margaret Dunn will give her remarks. On behalf of our faculty and staff, I want to welcome all of you, family and friends of our graduates, and especially the members of the class of 2020. This year marks the 40th anniversary of our very first graduating class. Typically, our commencement exercises are held at the Schuster Center in downtown Dayton. And I have the opportunity to congratulate our graduates, each one of you, on your outstanding achievement. But as you know, this is no ordinary time, far from it. Like all of you, we are working to adapt to this pandemic, and this includes convening our first virtual graduation. To our graduates, you have worked exceedingly hard to reach this important milestone. You have studied longer, learned more, and demanded more of yourself than ever before. You are now entering one of the oldest and most valued professions in the world. You should be immensely proud. Over the past several years, as your faculty, we have been honored to witness and encourage your personal and professional growth. You've completed a very difficult curriculum and it has prepared you well for clinical training and for practice that is sure to be even more demanding, yet profoundly rewarding. If we've done our job right, your education as a physician has deepened your dedication to the core values of our profession. Altruism, service, responsibility, empathy, and respect for all, a commitment to learning and improvement. No matter the specialty you enter, society needs your help 
and I am confident that you will deliver that help. During your medical education, despite its many demands, you all demonstrated your humanity through service, sharing your time and talents to improve the lives of others. Many of you undertook medical missions around the globe. Others served closer to home, reaching out to those in need among our neighbors. And we acknowledge and celebrate the people who helped you discover and nurture that passion to care and to serve. We hope you can appreciate with this virtual graduation that your families, friends, and colleagues, your classmates, all celebrate your accomplishments today. They have been with you every step of the way, providing support and encouragement as you undertook this life-changing journey of becoming a physician. Your faculty is confident that your years of, at Boonshoff have prepared you well for the opportunities and the challenges before you. Your character, knowledge, and technical skill will surely be tested. You will encounter days when you feel exhausted, overworked, unappreciated, and afraid. Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, the first American woman physician, wisely said, none of us can know what we are capable of until we are tested. But we as your faculty are confident that you will prevail by drawing upon the character and compassion that we as your faculty have observed during your years with us here. I have every faith that you, like the proud Wright State Boonshoff alumni whose ranks you join today, will flourish in your clinical training and beyond. I know you will re retain the ideals, values, and sense of mission that you have today. I wish for each and every one of you the profound satisfaction and humble gratitude that comes from serving as a physician. You will soon take your well-deserved place among the generations of physicians who have lived and served by the oath you have recited. Please accept my heartfelt congratulations and my best wishes on this special day. Thank you, Dr. Dunn. And now, Mr. Hall Wong, president of the class of 2020, will present remarks on behalf of his class. Class of 2020, we finally made it. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. And uh, this quarantine has given me time to think. Um, really try to be as authentic as possible in this video. And it's been getting me to think a lot about how we really need each other. Yeah, even for the speech, I needed help from people to read it over and think about what I wanted to say. I can honestly say that you guys are the best group of individuals I will ever be a part of. The kindest, the most generous, most hardworking, and the most willing to help one another. And to all the friends and families watching, you have so much to be proud of. Not only have my classmates been putting in the work day in and day out, but they've actually been through much more. Things that you aren't gonna see on the graduation pamphlets. They've been through the stress of taking care of families, children, relationships. They've been through breakups. And most difficult of all, they've lost loved ones. But through these hardships, we supported one another, we grew stronger, and we became family. I remember the day that I found out that I had failed a course and I had to be in a different class. I walked into Ms. Valencia's office to get my test results, and the look on her face said it all. I knew I failed. Boom, just like that, my world 
as I knew it, came crashing down. And at that moment, I was questioning everything. I was, was I meant to be in medicine? Was I smart enough? What in the world is going on? And I could have gone home that day and just stayed in, sad, but something told me to go to the picnic that day at Carillon Park, which was a part of orientation for the new class, you guys. And I don't know if you guys remember meeting me that day, but I was a complete mess inside, at least. And so I decided to join the pickup football game going on um, so that I didn't have to talk. And you guys welcomed me in with open arms. And from then on, I was a part of the class. You guys really helped me through that dark period in my life where I was doubting myself. And I want to thank you for that. And I know that each and every one of us had our struggles, but we got through them by leaning on each other. And that is something I hope you take into residency. Please take care of yourself and take care of one another. Take the time to de-stress. Don't let the work become your entire life. And if you ever find yourself stressed to the point of no return, please reach out and ask for help. As you all know too well, we are currently in a healthcare crisis that we soon will be joining the fight against COVID. My prayers and thoughts go out to those who are currently sick along with the health work, healthcare workers who are currently risking their lives. And as you may have heard, this virus is disproportionately affecting our minority populations. But this is a story that we unfortunately know all too well. Sadly, a majority of the problems we encounter in healthcare are simply reflections of the systemic and socioeconomic problems we have in society. And a lot of this is caused by the history of our country. But we can't ignore this problem anymore. Now, as physicians, we really have the ability to dig into these issues. Our voices carry more weight than before, and we have the ability to use our voices to speak for those who are not heard. We can take the issues that we see our patients struggling with day in and day out, the patterns that we're seeing, and we can use that to inform our policymakers to help our system work better for us and our patients. None of us gets to choose where we're born, the color of our skin, whether we're born into a rich family or a poor family, but what we do get to choose is how we treat one another. And I think that as physicians, we really have the opportunity to help our marginalized communities heal and show them that they are truly a part of this body, of this country. I love you guys. You're the best class to ever grace the halls of Boone Chop School of Medicine. Uh, if Dr. Toussaint was here in this room right now, he would be like, you have zero days till graduation. Um, I love you guys. See you guys at our first, our one year reunion and um, all of the various weddings that you guys are about to have. And um, yeah, peace out. Thank you, Mr. Wong. And it is now my honor to introduce our guest speaker for the afternoon. It is my pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce Dr. John Donnelly. Dr. John F. J. Donnelly, MD, graduated from the University of Texas, UT Medical School at Houston and completed his family medicine residency program at Memorial Hermann Texas Medical Center. He served as faculty for the UT Houston residency program from 1988 to 1997 before joining the Department of Family Medicine at Wright State University. Dr. Donnelly has filled many roles in medical education throughout his career, including pre-doc director, family medicine clerkship director, fourth year preceptorship director, and residency program associate director. He reached the rank of professor in 2011. Dr. Donnelly is the founding course director of the Healer's Art course and Finding Me Meaning in Medicine program. 
which promoted humanism and professionalism in medicine. He is married with three children. Please join me in welcoming Dr. John Donnelly. So to the class of 2020 and to those who have made your day possible, your parents, spouses, significant others, children, siblings, relatives, and friends, congratulations. I am certain that you feel great joy for your achievements and excitement for the journey ahead. I also suspect that you have a twinge of grief as close friends go their separate ways and some apprehension about your preparedness for residency education. This uneasiness is likely exacerbated by the uncharted territories we travel due to COVID-19. My heart aches for you because this pandemic has so drastic, drastically disrupted your last few months of medical school, wreaked havoc upon your plans and dreams, and deprived you of monumental life experiences. Some of you have made the crushing decision to alter your marriage plans and postpone your wedding receptions. You have foregone international travel, valuable clinical rotations, and important life events. Many of you are scrambling from afar to finalize living arrangements for residency. You are missing out on special gatherings with family and friends to celebrate your graduation. Certainly, your virtual graduation ceremony has less pomp and circumstance than you would have enjoyed pre-COVID, but look at the bright side. The time you need to listen to me ramble has been cut in half. Thank you for this great and humbling honor to speak with you today. Since I have limited stories and a suspect sense of humor, just ask my wife, Kim, I am concerned that I have already shared my best pearls of wisdom with you. I hope that my words today connect with you at both cognitive and affective levels, adequately praise you for your impressive achievements, and open your minds and hearts to the great opportunities and responsibilities that await you as a physician. And I ask that we honor Sean Bush, our friend and colleague who would have graduated next year if not for his tragic and untimely death. I am certain that Sean is smiling upon you from his heavenly perch at this very moment. My message to you is simply to challenge you to be your best each day and to encourage you to go above and beyond to serve your patient. In the Gospel of St. Luke, the patron saint of physicians, Jesus says, For unto whomever much is given, of him shall much be required. These words resonate deeply within me as I interpret them to mean that those of us who have been blessed with skill, wealth, or knowledge are expected to use our gifts for the benefit of others. For those of us who believe that we have been called to be a physician, I surmise that Christ's words articulate an obvious truth. Yet, how is it that so many smart and caring people in medicine seems to lose sight of this message? How can we as physicians keep these words in focus so that they guide our attitudes, words, and behaviors each and every day? In medical school, your education has been predominantly doctor-centered. That is, you learn to think and act like a physician. As a resident, you will learn how to truly become a doctor who treats and advocates for your patients with illness and suffering. In my experience as a physician educator, the greatest leap in our professional development as doctors is the exact point you find yourself today, transitioning from medical student to resident physician with this profound opportunity, privilege, and responsibility. If you are willing, you can be your patient's strongest ally in a complex and intimidating healthcare system. Shamelessly pilfering from David Letterman, and because I'm only half as funny, I humbly present to you JD's top five reasons to be a resident. Number five, improve your sense of fashion by upgrading from your short white coat, crammed with various medical instruments, abridged texts, and board review question books, to a long white coat smartly inscribed with your name, followed by MD. Number four, lower your home utility bills by wearing hospital scrubs every chance you get. Number three, awesome skin cancer prevention. You'll avoid direct exposure to sunlight by spending all daylight hours in a hospital for days, even weeks at a time. Number two, you're earning a paycheck. You're no longer accruing debt for your medical education. Of course, you'll still have ample opportunities to biopsy your wallets to cover expenditures like children in their schooling, homes, and vehicles. Heck, 
You might even need to purchase a washer and dryer when you can no longer wear scrubs every day. And the number one most important reason to be a resident, the opportunity to serve patients and hone your craft as a caring and competent MD. From this point onward, the buck stops with you. You will write orders on behalf of your patient without needing a co-signature from a more experienced physician. Give your best effort in this regard every day and you will be the best physician you can be. This top reason brings us back to Christ's words in St. Luke's Gospel. For unto whomever much is given, of him shall much be required. In addition to being the patron saint of physicians, St. Luke, himself a Greek physician, is also the patron saint of artists, bachelors, students, surgeons, and butchers. Quite the juxtaposition. I believe that Christ's teaching perfectly illuminates the core values of the Hippocratic Oath and its ethical principles of non-maleficence, do no harm, and beneficence, do good whenever possible. First and foremost is the care of our patient, which is achieved only through the sacred doctor relationship founded upon mutual trust and respect. During those times when you're uncertain how to next proceed, let these words along with a heaping helping of kindness, be your guide. Of course, I'm preaching to the choir. After all, you're graduates of Boonshop School of Medicine. The individual and collective achievements of your class are the stuff of legends. Just look at your inspiring responses to the current pandemic, interventions which are improving the health and well-being of your patients and communities. Some examples of your amazing work include Jessica Sokol, Katrina Thede, and other students who counsel patients about COVID as volunteers with the Montgomery County Health Department. Juliet Corsello, an Air Force medic, and Kyle Henneke, a nurse prior to being a medical student, both in the class of 2022, are caring for patients on the front lines with COVID in New Orleans and New York. Many of you volunteer as tutors and babysitters for children of Wright State uh, faculty and staff and over 80 medical students are making virtual social visits with seniors who live alone in Greater Dayton. Please continue to make your mark and serve those less fortunate. Every generation of physicians has its triumphs and vexing challenges. All of us stand in awe of the great advances in science and medicine which have reduced premature mortality and improved the quality of life for patients throughout the world. Your generation is encountering the opioid epidemic, disparities in health care and health outcomes, and gun violence. Recall those terrifying 32 seconds in the early morning hours of last August 4th, when nine Daytonians were killed and another 17 wounded by an armed assailant. And of course, together we face COVID-19, an entity that has profoundly harmed so many people throughout the world. The present time is a defining moment, and I believe that history will measure us by our response to this pandemic. As they always do, the most vulnerable of society are bearing the brunt of this illness. In my estimation, one of the cruelest aspects of COVID is that it physically isolates us and deprives people with serious illness or impending death from being with loved ones. Recently, Nina Shapiro of the Seattle Times wrote a touching article entitled Grief, Compassion, and Ingenuity as the Coronavirus Brings Endless Complications to One Family's Goodbye. Mr. Nguyen, a 72-year-old Vietnamese gentleman, was dying of respiratory failure from COVID. He was married with nine adult children and a large extended family. After serving as a soldier in the Vietnam War, he and his family embarked on a harrowing journey from the north to the south of Vietnam. Seeking a better life, he built three boats and they set sail on the South China Sea, taking penniless strangers with them. Eventually, a freighter picked them up and took them to an Indonesian refugee camp. After enduring further hardship, they subsequently made their way to America. Despite their close bonds built upon selfless love and sacrifice, no family members could enter into Mr. Nguyen's ICU room because of isolation protocols to prevent the spread of COVID. Only his wife, T, and one child were allowed in the common area of the ICU, and they could only look at him through a glass partition. 
Despite mechanical ventilatory support, his condition deteriorated, and his doctors advised that he be disconnected from the ventilator. The rest of the family, while exercising care to remain at least six feet apart, prayed in the hospital parking lot. Nurse Judy was Mr. Nguyen's nurse and was in his room when the ventilator was to be turned off. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. Per their Catholic faith, Mr. Nguyen and his family wished for him to receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, that is, last rites. A priest, Father Tan Dao, came to the ICU, but he could not enter into Mr. Nguyen's room. Nurse Judy, Judy wearing the all-too-familiar isolation attire of gown, mask, cap, and gown, dipped the Q-tip swab into the holy oil brought by Father Dao, who gave Nurse Judy step-by-step -step instructions via walkie-talkie uh, to administer last rites to Mr. Nguyen. The rest of the family listened to these last rites via cell phone connection. Then, Nurse Judy motioned to Mrs. Nguyen to put her hand on the glass partition. Nurse Judy raised her hand to meet Mrs. Nguyen in a high-five position, then with her other hand reached back to hold Mr. Nguyen's foot as he lay dying in his ICU bed. As the ventilator was disconnected and Mr. Nguyen took his last breaths and died, he and his wife of over 50 years were connected by this simple yet deeply sacred act of a kind and caring nurse, a heroic nurse. These are the kinds of opportunities that await you if you are willing to seek them as a physician. Congratulations, colleagues. Thank you for allowing me to share in your celebration. In a few moments, you will virtually walk across the stage to collect your hard-won, well-deserved medical diploma, one that will change your life, enrich your life, and enable you to serve people in profound ways. I have supreme confidence that each of you will be a blessing for your patients. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Donnelly, for those inspiring words. Dr. Donnelly, we want to ensure you remember this special occasion. On behalf of the Wright State University's Boonshoff School of Medicine, the class of 2020 presents you with this replica of the original 1903 Wright Flyer, which was designed and built in Dayton, Ohio, birthplace of aviation. It's become a tradition for each class to present the school with a class gift. So, the class of 2020 has presented us with a $250 donation to the Meaning in Medicine program that Dr. Donnelly mentioned. On behalf of the Boonshaw School of Medicine, we would like to sincerely thank the members of the class of 2020 for this gift. Each year, the graduating class also recognizes an individual or organization that has made a significant contribution to the Wright State University's Boonshaw School of Medicine. It is our honor to recognize Dr. Robert Brandt. Dr. Brandt is a member of the 1980 charter class of Wright State University's School of Medicine. That's before Boonshaw was in the name. He turned down an acceptance to The Ohio State University's College of Medicine to enter the charter class at Wright State in 1976. Because he knew that being in a small class of 32 would give him a good opportunity to have a very good learning experience. Not moving to Columbus saved him from having to develop a whole new support system of friends in the community his thoughts proved themselves true. After graduating from medical school, Dr. Brandt continued to focus on supporting and caring for the community. He was on the front line in the fight against HIV in Dayton, Ohio, over 30 years ago. After several years of volunteering at the Miami Valley Hospital to help with HIV patients, Dr. Brandt established a practice to more appropriately and adequately address the lack of care for patients fighting this sickness. Throughout the years, he extended and improved the quality of life for patients with HIV and AIDS. He also helped them to suffer less and enjoy the time that they had. 
he personally saw that they were treated for HIV and went from impossible to manageable. Dr. Brandt made a difference. For years, Dr. Brandt has helped train and mentor students at the Boonshoff School of Medicine. Now retired, he continues to consult with local physicians in the care of his past patients. He serves as an advisor for Boonshoff Pride in conjunction with a group called Rainbow Elder Care. He's also a member of our admissions committee. Dr. Brandt is assisting with a history project documenting lives of those in the Dayton area, LGBTQA community. Dr. Brandt, we are grateful for your contributions. Now I will present the Teaching Excellence Award. This year it's presented to Dr. Colas, Dr. Uh, John Col uh, Paul Colas. Dr. Colas is an associate professor and chair of pathology. He's also associate professor of surgery, director of pathology education, and he received his MD degree at Loma Linda University in 1979. He did his residency here in this area at Kettering Medical Center. Dr. Colas, congratulations on yet another Teaching Excellence Award. I think he's in double digits with that award now. So, at this time, Dr. Dunn will present the Dean's Award. The Dean's Award is given to a graduate who demonstrates a commitment to academic excellence, who embodies empathy and compassion towards everyone she or he comes in combat with, and who exemplifies personal integrity and professionalism, earning the respect and trust of classmates and faculty. I am pleased to present this year's award to Lillian White. In addition to demonstrating academic excellence, Lily gave back to the medical school and her colleagues in many ways. One example was Project Wellness, a conference she organized on integrative medicine. Those who attended learned about the importance of nutrition, self-care, with a focus on the whole patient. Lillian has been active in the Family Medicine Student Group, which was honored with the Program of Excellence Award from the American Academy of Family Physicians. As a volunteer at the Open Arms Free Clinic, Lily helped to develop a Pathways to Wellness program that complements the clinic's services. Her empathy and compassion for others, her integrity and professionalism are clear to her patients, her colleagues, and her faculty. Here are a few examples of comments from her clinical evaluators. Lillian stands out as a leader among her classmates. And Lillian will be a wonderful physician for her future patients and community. Lily will soon begin her residency in family medicine at the Cleveland Clinic, and it gives me great pleasure to present you with the Dean's Award for the class of 2020. Dr. Edwards, please join me. The candidates to be individually presented by Dr. Brenda Roman have been recommended by the faculty having completed all requirements for the Doctor of Medicine degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer your Doctorate of Medicine. It is now time for the virtual hooding ceremony and the awarding of diplomas. Members of the hooding faculty were selected by the class of 2020 to receive teaching excellence awards in recognition of their dedication in teaching. On behalf of the class of 2020, 
I would like to recognize Drs. Kenan Miller, Smitha Krishnamurthy, Gregory Toussaint, and Tadris Andam, who would have hooded our graduates. After each senior's name is read, he or she can begin, begin signing their name with the title MD. Each graduate has submitted their MD signature to be archived in our registry of graduates. Each new graduate will receive their diploma by mail later this month. Included with each diploma will be a Wright State University Boone Shop School of Medicine pen engraved with his or her name, courtesy of the Dean's Office, among other gifts. And so now we will begin. Joycelyn I. Akamuni. Joycelyn will also receive her Master's in Public Health. Shanice A. Akota. Shanice also receives her Master's in Public Health. Morgan T. Alexander. Darius J. Anderson. Michelle R. Axe. Janine A. Barrow. Janine will now serve as a captain in the Air Force Medical Corps. Abby L. Benner. Abby will now serve as a captain in the Army Medical Corps. Jeffrey J. Byerly. Jordan T. Boyven. Christina A. E. Borchers. Kate R. Boroff. Brianna P. Burlock. Brianna also receives her Master's in Public Health. Jenna G. Carson. Annie R. Cavalier. Tate R. Church. Carolyn E. Combs. Kristen R. Creel. Michelle S. Dozery. Marcus S. Dempster. Alexandra Diaz. Andrew S. Drozd. Emma J. Dunn. Yasmin Y. Y. Edwards. Matthew N. H. Ellis. Terrence J. Ellis. Mary M. B. Fergus. Mary will now serve as a lieutenant in the Navy Medical Corps. Connor W. Ferguson. Daniel T. Fisher. Daniel also served in the Ohio National Guard during his time in medical school. Brett D. Foster. Christopher R. Geyer. Alexa A. Jean Angel. Laura J. Godinez. Rinki Gaswami. Daniel M. Harris. Daniel will now, Danielle will now serve as a lieutenant in the Navy Medical Corps. Rachel A. Harriman. Jasmine J.L. Hill. Joseph S. Hoying. Q. 
Chika y Henja. Dauda Jawarar. Madison K. Cavanaugh. Taylor Brooke Kennedy. Jude Z. Khatib. Jude also receives her master's in pharmacology and toxicology. Alexander J. Kohler. Bridget C. Kramer. Emily S. Kugel. Eric S. Lee. Astrid L. Leon. Ryan K. Leventhal. Joanna P. Lynn. Tina Liu. Emily Luong. Tyler A. Luanawansu. Matthew S. Lyman. Logan M. Meg. Andrew C. S. Mullaney. William A. M. Malarkey. Luis H. Marconcini. Kelly A. Martin. Sarah E. McGraw. Elizabeth S. McInturf. Nana Fia Mensa. Guarantee Matoyer. John L. Miller. Stephanie C. Milne. Daniel R. Mohan. Gina Moon. Anna E. Moore. Kara P. Murphy. Brian P. Myers. Brian also served in the Ohio National Guard during his time in medical school. Robert J. Nadler. Jerry R. Nockby. Jerry also receives his master's in pharmacology and toxicology. Parvana K. Nori. Parvana also receives her master's in public health. Obiagili Obiako. Amanda M. Olney. Hannah C. Polster. Abigail M. Regal. Jennifer N. Rorex. Sarah J. Royal. Omar S. Sanyara. Blake M. Schock. Elizabeth N. Scheiderer. Brandon H. Schwartz. Anwar E. Shejarabi. 
Zachary J. Searoy. Megan C. Smith. Megan also receives her master's in public health. Evan M. Summer. Evan also receives his master's in business administration. Makund Shivanis. Jordan M. Stefko. Colton C. Stewart. Emily K. Stone. Megan E. Super. Alexandria J. Sutton. Meenal R. Thadassina. Katrina A. Thede. Katrina also receives her master's in business administration. Evan J. Thomas. Matthew D. Thomas. Justin L. Thrush. Justin also receives his master's in business administration. Morgan H. Torcasio. Tyler S. Vanderhoof. Paul S. Wong. Andrew N. Weschler. Mitchell J. Weeman. Lillian C. White. Lauren K. Wickman. Benita Y. Wu. Benita also receives her master's in pharmacology and toxicology. Congratulations to the class of 2020. You did it. As you move forward in your careers as, as physicians, hold sacred your role as healers and never lose sight of the importance of humanism in medicine. Be well and congratulations again. I invite all the physicians who have joined us virtually to join our graduates, these new physicians, in reciting the Hippocratic Oath. I swear to fulfill. I swear to fulfill. I swear to fulfill. To the best of my ability and judgment. To the best of my ability and judgment. To the best of my ability and judgment, this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk. Of those physicians in whose steps I walk. Those physicians in whose steps I walk. And gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. And gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. And gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required. I will apply for the benefit of the sick, all measures which are required. I will apply for the benefit of the sick, all measures which are required. Avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. Avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. Avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science. I will remember that there is an art to medicine, as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. And that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drugs. And that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will not be ashamed to say I know not, 
nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. I will respect the privacy of my patients, but their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. I will respect the privacy of my patients, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. Most especially must I tread with care and matters of life and death. Above all, I must not play God. Above all, I must not play God. Above all, I must not play God. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart a cancerous growth. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart a cancerous growth. I remember that I do not treat a fever chart a cancerous growth by a sick human being. Whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. Whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. Whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. Whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibilities include these related medical problems. My responsibility includes these related problems. My responsibility includes these related problems. If I am to care adequately for the sick. If I am to care adequately for the sick. If I am to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent disease whenever I can. I will prevent disease whenever I can. I will prevent disease whenever I can. I will always look for a path to cure for all diseases. But I will always look for a path to, to a cure for all diseases. But I will always look for a path to a cure for all diseases. I will remember that I remain a member of society. I remember that I remain a member of society. I will remember that I remain a member of society. With special obligations to all my fellow human beings. With special obligations to all my fellow human beings. With special obligations to all my fellow human beings. Those of sound mind and body, as well as the infirm. Those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. Those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy the life and art. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art. Respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. Respected while I live and remembered with the affection thereafter. Respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. The finest traditions of my calling. May I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. May I always act as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Well, doctors of medicine, we got her done. Uh, this actually ends the academic portion of our program. Just a few closing thoughts. An observation was made to us that uh, Dr. Anna Moore was the recipient of the Family Medicine Worthman Award. So we just need to make sure that's corrected on the pre-graduation slides. Before we go, I just wanted to leave you with 31 words. They are, change is like an ever-present life partner who I despise when it takes me from my comfort zone, but love when it reveals my potential to become a better person. This journey has made you better people and will make you better physicians. Remember those demons and dragons we talked about on the first day of medical school. And once again, congratulations to the class of 2020. Doctors, stay alert, stay safe, stay strong, and stay awesome. To the class of 2020, and to those who have made your day possible, your parents, spouses, significant others, children, siblings, relatives and friends, congratulations. I am certain that you feel great joy for your achievements and excitement for the journey ahead. I also suspect that you have mixed emotions. 
a twinge of grief as close friends go their separate way, and some apprehension about your preparedness for residency education. This uneasiness is likely exacerbated by our needing to navigate the uncharted seas of COVID-19, the novel coronavirus. My heart aches for you because this pandemic has so drastically disrupted your last few months of medical school, wreaked havoc upon your plans and dreams, and deprived you of monumental life experiences. Some of you have needed to make the crushing decision to alter your marriage plans and postpone wedding receptions. You have had to forego international travel, valuable clinical rotations, and important family and social events. Many of you are scrambling from afar to finalize living arrangements in the city you will do your residency. You are missing out on special gatherings with family and friends to celebrate your graduation. Certainly, your virtual graduation ceremony has less pomp and circumstance than you would have enjoyed pre-COVID-19. To use complex medical terminology, these things suck. But look at the bright side. The time you need to listen to me ramble on today is much shorter than your typical lecture or team-based learning. Thank you for this great and humbling honor to speak with you today. Since I have limited stories and a suspect sense of humor, just ask my wife Kim, I am concerned that I have already shared my best pearls of wisdom and life experiences with the graduates. At least your loved ones in the virtual audience have not heard my musings and ramblings before. I hope that my words today connect with you at both cognitive and affective levels, adequately praise you for your achievements to date, and open your minds and hearts to the great opportunities and responsibilities that await you as a physician. And I ask that we honor Sean Bush, our friend and colleague, who would have graduated next year if not for his tragic and untimely death. I am certain that Sean is smiling upon us right now from his heavenly perch. My message to you today is simply to challenge you to be your best each and every day and to encourage you to go above and beyond to serve your patient. In the Gospel of St. Luke, the patron saint of physicians, Jesus says, For unto whomever much is given, of him shall much be required. These words resonate deeply within me as I interpret them to mean that those of us who have been blessed with skill, wealth, or knowledge are expected to use our gifts for the benefit of others. For those of us who believe that we have been called to our noble profession, I suspect that Christ's words encapsulate an obvious truth. Yet, how is it that so many smart and caring people in medicine seem to lose sight of this message? How can we as physicians keep these words in focus so that they guide our attitudes, words, and behaviors each and every day. What strategies have you already adopted to become a great physician? In medical school, your education has been predominantly doctor-centered. That is, you learn to think and act like a physician. You have learned about a vast array of diseases, to obtain a thorough and accurate medical history and physical examination, to formulate a differential diagnosis to explain a patient's symptoms and to implement a care of, plan of care for your patient. As a resident, you will learn how to truly become a doctor who treats and advocates for your patient who has illness and suffering. In my experience as a physician educator, the greatest leap in our professional development as doctors is the exact point you find yourself today transitioning from medical student to resident physician with its profound opportunity, privilege, and responsibility. If you are willing, you can be your patient's strongest ally in a complex and intimidating healthcare system. Residency, like Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities, will include both the best of times and the worst of times. At times you will be overworked, underpaid, and unable to see enough of your loved ones. During tough days, it helps me to remember that being overworked and underpaid is the best form of job security. My boss can't afford to get rid of me. In the next several months, you will experience the entire spectrum of emotions, incredible highs and painful lows. Anticipate these times and surround yourself with good people for support. So, 
that when your sense of skill and competence is supplanted by an overwhelming feeling of incompetence or helplessness, you will not be alone. Residency is also an energizing, fulfilling, and fun experience. Really, it is fun. You will learn how to become the consummate physician with the attributes of competence, compassion, and self-reflection. Shamelessly pilfering from David Letterman, I humbly present to you JD's top 10 residents to be a res top 10 reasons to be a resident. Number 10, improve your sense of fashion by upgrading from your short white coat, crammed with various medical instruments, abridged texts, and board review question books, to a long white coat embroidered with your name, followed by MD. Number nine, lower your home utility bills or reduce the number of trips to the neighborhood laundromat by wearing hospital scrubs every chance you get. Number eight, dine frequently at the five-star hospital cafeteria at a discounted rate or even free of charge. When you review the menu choices, is it any wonder why so many folks are hospitalized? I suggest that you don't make a date to take the love of your life to dinner there. Number seven, perfect the art of sleeping while standing on rounds, holding a retractor in the OR, or even while interviewing a patient. You will learn to improve your sleep efficiency even while being vigilant for the next beep of your pager. Number six, you now get to pimp medical students. Need I say more? Number five, know by heart the phone number of every nurse's station, lab, and imaging department in the hospital. Number four, avoid traffic jams and min minimize your exposure to incidents of road rage by leaving for work before everyone else and returning home long after every other commuter in your city. During my trips to and from the hospital or office, I think about my patients, especially those with critical illness or complex presentations. During these reflections, I sometimes identify essential aspects of their health which I had failed to recognize or address sufficiently. Number three, awesome skin cancer prevention. You'll avoid direct exposure to sunlight by spending all daylight hours in the hospital for days, even weeks at a time. Yet another perk of getting to work so early and leaving so late. Number two, you're earning a paycheck. You're no longer accruing debt for your medical education. Of course, you'll still have ample opportunities to buy ops of your pocketbooks and wallets to cover expenditures, like children and their schooling, homes, and vehicles. You might even need to purchase a washer and dryer when you can no longer wear scrubs every day. And the number one most important reason to be a resident, the opportunity to serve patients and hone your craft as a caring and competent MD. From this point onward, the buck stops with you. You will write orders on behalf of your patient without needing a co-signature from another, more experienced physician. Give your best effort in this regard every day and you will be the best physician you can be. The top reason brings us back to Jesus' words in St. Luke's Gospel. In addition to being the patron saint of physicians, St. Luke, thought to have been a Greek physician by many biblical scholars, is also the patron saint of artists, bachelors, students, surgeons, and butchers. Quite the juxtaposition. The good Lord really does have a clever sense of humor, eh? For unto whomever much is given, of him shall be much required, which in St. Luke's Gospel is immediately followed by, for the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. I believe that Christ's teaching perfectly illuminates the core values of the Hippocratic Oath and its ethical principles of non-maleficence, that is, do no harm, and beneficence, do good whenever possible. First and foremost is the care of our patient which is achieved only through the sacred doctor-patient relationship founded upon mutual trust, respect, and partnership. During those times when you're uncertain how to next proceed, let these words, along with a heaping helping of kindness, be your guide. Of course, I'm preaching to the choir now. After all, you are graduates of the Boonshaw School of Medicine. The individual and collective achievements of your class are the stuff of legends, just look at your creative and uplifting responses to the current pandemic, interventions which are improving the health and well-being of your patients and communities. 
Some examples of your amazing work include Jessica Sokol, Katrina Thede, and six other medical students who counsel patients about COVID-19 as volunteers with the Ohio Medical Reserve at the Montgomery County Health Department. Two colleagues in the class of 2022, Juliet Corsello, an Air Force medic, and Kyle Henneke, a nurse prior to medical school, are caring for patients with COVID-19 in the front lines in New York and New Orleans, respectively. Numerous medical students volunteer as tutors and babysitters for children of Wright State faculty and staff. Matt Lovell, Ashley Brent, and the Medical School Student Council have coordinated efforts leading to 80 medical students making social visits with seniors who live alone in Greater Dayton. I am inspired by your generosity of heart and selfless contributions, and I am truly honored to be able to call you my colleague. Thank you. Prior to COVID, you have impacted scores of underserved people in local, national, national and global communities. Please continue to make your mark and serve those less fortunate. Every generation has its own triumphs and vexing challenges. All of us stand in awe of the great advances in science and medicine, which have reduced premature mortality and improved the quality of patients throughout the world. My generation has struggled with AIDS, Alzheimer's dementia, disparities in health care and health outcomes, multi-resistant microbes, and increasing numbers of people with mental illness and chronic conditions. Your generation is encountering the opioid epidemic, Ebola virus, the rising prevalence of autism spectrum disorders and intimate partner violence, vaping and its health effects, and gun violence. Harken back to those terrifying 32 seconds in the early morning hours of August 4th, 2019, when nine Daytonians were killed and another 17 were wounded by an armed assailant. And of course, together we face COVID-19, an entity that has profoundly harmed so many people across the globe. The present time is a defining moment, and I believe that history will judge us by our response to this viral pandemic. As they always do, the most vulnerable of society are bearing the brunt of this illness. In times of crisis, we tend to see the very worst and the very best of people. This pandemic is no exception. While some people are paralyzed by fear and anxiety, others act selflessly and bravely, be it on the front lines of patient care, volunteering in a multitude of ways, finding creative solutions, or by adhering to physical distancing. While some folks sell face masks at exorbitant prices, others make them and donate freely to those in need. Courage, justice, and heroism often arise from the bleakest of circumstances. I'd bet a king-sized pack of toilet paper, apparently a more valuable commodity than gold these days, that Tom Brady, when trailing 28 to three in the third quarter of Super Bowl 51, didn't say to his teammates in the huddle, this is hopeless boys, let's pack it in. Rather, he exhorted his teammates to stay focused, give their best effort, and go win the championship. You knew I was gonna get a Boston sports reference in there, didn't you? Overcoming such adversity makes this, the victory much more memorable than easier wins. Despite the upheaval and, upheaval and chaos co caused by COVID-19, it also grants us opportunities to respond courageously and magnanimously. I think this is the lesson of St. Thomas Aquinas when he wrote that, the principal act of courage is to endure and withstand dangers doggedly, rather to attack them in a single act of bravery. In a similar vein, the Dalai Lama said, it is under the greatest adversity that there exists the greatest potential for doing good, both for oneself and for others. In my estimation, one of the cruelest things about COVID is that it physically isolates us and deprives people with serious illness or imminent death from being with their loved ones. In the March 30th edition of the Seattle Times, Nina Shapiro wrote a touching article entitled, Grief, Compassion, and Ingenuity as the Coronavirus Brings Endless Complications to One Family's Goodbye. Mr. Huang Nguyen, a 72-year-old Vietnamese gentleman was dying of respiratory failure from COVID. 
He was married with nine adult children and a large extended family. After serving as a soldier in the Vietnam War, he hid his family under a blanket in a truck to escape from the north to the south of Vietnam. Seeking a better life for his family, he built three boats, and they set sail in the South China Sea, taking penniless strangers with them. Eventually, a freighter picked them up and took them to an Indonesian refugee camp. After enduring further hardship, they subsequently made their way to America. All nine children have graduated from college and contribute to their communities in amazing ways. Despite these close bonds built upon selfless love and sacrifice, no family members could enter into Mr. Nguyen's ICU room because of the isolation protocols to prevent the spread of COVID infection. Only his wife T and one child were allowed into the common area of the ICU and they could only look at him through a glass partition. Despite mechanical ventilatory support, Mr. Nguyen's condition continued to deteriorate and the ICU doctors advised that he be dis disconnected from the vent. The rest of the family, while exercising care to remain at least six feet, six feet apart from each other, prayed in the hospital parking lot. Nurse Judy, a resident of Texas who had come to Seattle in response to the COVID outbreak in Washington, was Mr. Nguyen's nurse and was in his room when the ventilator was to be turned off. What happened next was nothing short of miraculous. Per their Catholic faith, Mr. Nguyen and his family wished for him to receive the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, that is, the last rites. A priest, Father Tan Dao, came to the ICU, but he also could not enter into Mr. Nguyen's room. Nurse Judy, wearing the all too familiar isolation attire of gown, mask, cap, and gown, dipped a Q-tip swab into the holy oil brought by Father Dao, who gave Nurse Judy step-by-step -step instructions via walkie-talkie to administer last rites to Mr. Nguyen. The rest of the family listened to the last rites via cell phone connection. Then, Nurse Judy motioned to Mrs. Nguyen to put her hand on the, on the glass partition. Nurse Judy then raised her hand to meet Mrs. Nguyen's hand like a high-five posture then with her other hand reached back to hold Mr. Nguyen's foot as he lay dying in his ICU bed. As the ventilator was disconnected and Mr. Nguyen took his last breaths and died, he and his wife of over 50 years were connected by this simple yet deeply sacred act of a kind and caring nurse, a heroic nurse. These are the kind of opportunities that await you if you are willing to seek them as a physician. You will be granted tremendous opportunity to do good for others during residency. Despite causing such suffering, COVID-19 gifts us with a window of powerful insight into the thoughts and emotions of our patients and their loved ones when people are afflicted with illness, injury, or a situation that threatens their integrity. Perhaps this pandemic makes us more aware of the chaos and upheaval a person experiences during severe illness or distress. I pray that we do not lose this gift of insight and wisdom once this pandemic wanes and life returns to normal. Colleagues, congratulations. Thank you for allowing me to share in your celebration. In a few moments, you will virtually walk across the stage to collect your hard-won, well-deserved medical diploma, one that will change your life enrich your life and allow you to serve people in profound ways. I pray that the joy you have brought me returns to you many times over in the future. I have supreme confidence that each of you will be a blessing for your patients. Thank you and may God bless you.